This is a part of my bulb hole for fall 2021. I will be planting my bulbs down here on my new garden bed that I built a couple of weeks ago. This is basically an extension of we planted our peonies a few years back. Um, the original garden bed is about three foot uh, deep and now we're, we're, I've extended it to about seven uh, to eight foot deep uh, using these blocks, these cement blocks that you just stack one on top of the other. It's the easiest way um, to build a raised garden bed. Um, but back to my bulb hole, I, I went to a local grocery store and got these on sale. This was buy one, I get one half off um, of this daffodil mix. And on this mix, we had 45 plus bulbs. Um, I've got these last year in fur bag. It contained about 50 bulbs, um, de-resistant, good color, very robust, and, and they were easy to plant. And so I figured this this year, as I extend my garden beds, we will be planting more of them. Um, this is Purple Sensation Allium. They will come back year after years. Same with the daffodils. They will come back year after year because they're perennial. Um, so I wanted to really dot this entire garden bed with a lot of these uh, purple alliums that will be available every spring. Aside from the purple allium and the daffodils, I have tulips and these are tulips that are called Just Kiss and uh, Mistress. So we've got some pink uh, tulips here, they're goblet shape and uh, purple plus yellow. Um, I think it would really give us a good show. I have another bag here called it's a Dutch name called Van Eyck. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this bulb is, it has a really bright pink, uh, close to red hue that I would like to plant in this garden bed. So what I'm gonna do is I will mix um, the tulips along with the daffodils. That way we can protect the tulips from any unwanted deer. I know that last year we had some deer come through the property. I have bone meal, which I always use. Um, it's a good source of phosphorus, which is what the bulbs would need for even uh, bigger, um, being robust and, and just healthy overall. Um, you can see the phosphorus on bone meal in this bag. It has 1% nitrogen. Um, again, that's the macronutrient. The nitrogen is for the greenery. 25, that is a big, big number for phosphorus, which would be which would help the flower um, and the root production. And um, th those are the basic two macronutrients that the bone meal will provide. I will put the camera down, set it up, and I want to show you guys how we will plant this. And after I'm through, I will give you um, a good rundown of what we did. Okay. Here is an overhead shot of what I did. I usually start my planting bed um, putting in some good amount of bone meal. This is a, a bedding uh, essentially. And so what I'm doing is putting down the bone meal and laying down the pattern for uh, the individual uh, pyramids where my daffodils will come together. These daffodils, as you can see, are very big and plump. And with the um, absorption of the nutrients coming from the bone meal, they will only double in size year in and year out. Okay, guys, wanted to give you an update of uh, the first phase of this planting scheme that I did. What I've done is I've opened up my daffodil packages. I planted them where uh, the daffodils kind of form a pyramid. Like the base of the pyramid will be near the, the concrete guard for the soil. And uh, the base of the pyramid will be all the way down the bottom. And then it goes into a triangle uh, shape. And there's a few of them, like there's another one. And so forth and so on. There's a second pyramid and a few pyramids all the way down. So what I've created here is an inverted triangle if you're looking at it from this side of the garden bed in between these negative spaces we'll have the tulips and the reason why I'm doing that is so that I could fend off some of the potential deer or rodents um, that may come into the garden that way uh, we can repel them um, and prevent them from eating up uh, the tulips tulips that I will use are those um, bright pink tulips that I have 
and in between the tulips we will put the allium so that would be the next plan of attack for uh, this garden bed and here we are guys planting all these tulips couldn't be easier what i've done here is eliminated the need for using a dibber instead of individually plant them in individual holes and what a time saver this is what they do for big um, historic homes or historic gardens when they do their fall bulb planting this is the easiest way so you can have the mass effect for maximum tulip showing in the spring look if it worked for historic homes and historic gardens i'm sure it will work in our garden as well so that's why i'm using this application this year and since this is a big garden bed all i had to do in the end is dump all the soil and voila all done after completing the planting scheme for the reclaimed garden bed, I turned my attention to the other garden bed. This is the problematic garden area that I uh, did some solutions on last spring. This garden bed is made up of three triangles because it's on a slope. That's the property line between me and my neighbors. It is right beside the vegetable garden patch that we have. And the middle triangle right now is the thing that needs a lot of help. There were a lot of perennial weeds in this garden bed. There was also no irrigation on this bed. And so what I did is lay down the brown tubing. That's the brown pipe that you see on top of the soil. What I plan on doing here is plant this area with cardoons and tulips including alliums so cardoons are the ones that you see right now with the jagged edge uh, leaf plants uh, i've grown them from seed and i'm very satisfied with the way they have grown uh, in these bags i've got purple sensation alliums these are bright purple blooms that will come up in the spring uh, they're 30 a bag and i got them on sale not too long ago they're perennial bulbs they will come back year after year and hopefully get more robust and big every year now the yellow net bag behind the alliums are daffodils. These are giant daffodils that I've never really grown this year. When I went to the store, they were uh, packing all the shelves with these daffodils and I wanted to try them. So what the heck, I got the, the big yellow bag and we'll see if it grows. I'm sure it will, but we're I'm curious to know how big they will become this year. Um, in this garden bed, I will show you how I use bone meal and how I plan on just casually lay outing all the bulbs there's no rhyme or reason in uh, planting all of them but at this point i wanted to uh, dig up a hole deep and uh, wide enough for the cardoons uh, to be accommodated cardoons have a uh, long tap roots i make sure that the soil is loose i also want to make sure that i put enough organic matter because cardoons are hungry plants they will grow best in a sunny location Again, loose soil, a lot of organic matter in the bottom of the hole. And uh, we shall see, this is my first year to grow them in the landscape. And I'm really excited how they will turn out this coming growing season for 2022. Just as a side note, as I mentioned earlier, I grew these cardoons from seed and they are the easiest thing. You get your seed, you put them in a potting compost made for seeds. You leave them moist and you want to make sure you have enough uh, heat and, and light to allow them to germinate. Within uh, 10 to 12 days, I got sprouts coming from the seeds. Um, these are, I think, four, four month old uh, grown uh, seedlings. Um, they're really more than seedlings now, but uh, that, they're very easy to grow. Highly encourage you. Uh, grow these seeds and, and grow these plants. They belong in the artichoke family. Uh, they also have uh, one of the more structural blooms. Uh, they look like artichokes and then they burst into a nice purple bluish um, froth right above it. It's shaped like a pineapple. Um, picture a pineapple with its uh, leaves uh, being purple and blue. So uh, it'll be a good structural plant for uh, this garden bed for sure. Okay, back to what I was doing. In the clip, uh, you saw me spread the bone meal and place it in the bottom of the hole. I've unpotted um, the cardoon and I'm now planting it nice and deep. Um, Want to make sure that there's enough drainage. You didn't see this, but I put uh, more gravel underneath the root ball of the plant, um, firming it in, making sure there are no pockets of air right around the root ball and within the new roots of the plants. 
after I firmed it in, I would plan on putting more mulch right on top of this garden bed. That way we can preserve the moisture and we can protect the plants from anything that may harm it and keep it from growing. Next, in this clip, you will see me using a long handle dibber. And I use the dibber so I can get enough big holes because I will sporadically plant all these alliums. In these little holes, what I'm doing is placing organic bone meal, about mm, two tablespoons, and I place it so that it would go right in the bottom of each hole. These are six to eight inch deep holes. Drop all the individual alliums inside, which again, the bone meal will provide all the nutrition it needs. This purple sensation allium is one of the things that I wanted to establish as part of our big collection of plants in our garden. These alliums will fit in well along this border as we are hoping to turn this into a classic cottage garden. This is what the allium bulbs look like, much similar to onions since they belong in the same family. The outer layer of the allium bulbs is similar to the paper that you see on the outer layer of onions. Allium bulbs are white and as far as shape, they are not as round and spherical as onions. They're pretty much geometrical in shape. What I'm showing you here is the basal plate and that's the end where it has all those rootlets coming out. This is the end that we will put downward as we drop them in the planting holes. Now for the big daffodil bulbs, what I did was dig a hole that should create a drift of daffodils that I also covered with bone meal. I randomly placed all the bulbs and covered it with dirt. Thanks guys for spending time with me on this video. I have a few other planting videos that involve bulbs, tubers, and corms, and I will give you all updates on how they will turn out. Hopefully one of the best showings that we can get for all these spring bulbs next year. Now before I leave, I'd like to say a special shout out and thanks to all our subscribers on this channel. You guys have stuck it out with me for more than a year. We are a startup YouTube channel and there's a lot more ideas and a lot more videos regarding DIYs and suggestions that I have to offer in the next few months. And I'm hoping along the way you're learning something new each time you view my videos. If you happen to stumble on the channel, I hope you'd consider subscribing if you haven't already. For now, this is Louis, keeping busy with all my fall planting and DIYs here in the garden. And I hope to see you soon here on the channel, here on Acorn Hill. Bye-bye for now.